<laughs> so you have to start with other colors that come from the world of painting big pictures on canvases. You know? Your shadow, you're adding dark gray to this. Yes, correct. Correct. That's this is the base, base color, and then uh, just a speck of dark gray. The reason I use I added dark gray for this cool shadow is that many of the gray colors that you that they sell have uh, other some tint of brown in them you know like stone gray medium gray uh, I don't know battleship gray maybe uh, uh, or whatever the names are uh, the dark gray is actually a little bit <coughs> it's a cool it's a neutral gray and that's why I chose that to make my warm grays darker I just took a little uh, burnt umber yeah <coughs> okay here's another magic trick when you look at these samples you can imagine how that would look like a white object but when I surround it by something that's darker yeah. Looks like it looks mm -hmm. kind of like white. Yeah. It, it reads, and the term read comes from that's what your brain turns it into. That's what your brain is telling you this is. Even that, that's a warm white when it's surrounded by <coughs> dark gray construction. That's the idea. Even there, you see how see how much lighter that looks when it's surrounded. And this is this is actually the 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 nature of of a figure on a table or something like that. Uh, you can go quite dark. It can be like a game, you know. How how dark can I actually make a white thing and still have it read by read as white? And uh, I always, I've been, I really focus on that when I see beautifully painted figures. And I, I think a lot of people do because they, it's, an, it's kind of an abstract thing, you know. I mean, when, so, back to this figure, this is my newest figure. And so that's what, uh, that's what these are. These are eventually, when I get, when I put highlights on there, uh, it'll, it's going to look like that, like a uh, white, dirty white cloth. <coughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I've spilled the beans now and I bring this somewhere and I show it, you'll go, ah, oh, that's not white, it's brown. <coughs> so. Did you add any highlights with the, with the uh, Vallejos, the base coat? Um, <coughs> oh, on, on my uh, on my my palette, you mean? Well, this is the undercoat, right? I did add a little bit of white here because uh, the that uh, way this uh, the turnbacks are similar to this, and I started. I've written down the colors that I use. I use dark sand. This is. Uh, and to the dark sand, I thought would read a little bit too yellow, so I added a little bit of uh, sky gray to cool it down a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this one, this is kind of in between warmth, you know, you got cold, uh, room temperature, and warm, or something like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so this, I started with deck tan. Uh, duck tan actually is is rather dark, so I chickened out. I added a little bit of ivory white. Ivory white is a warm white. I, ha I use another white that's called off white, and this is kind of a neutral um, off white. You know, when you paint a house and stuff like that, you can buy uh, off white paint. It's kind of in between white and gray. You know. So those are my colors. So I did I did lighten this one a little bit with uh, with ivory. This one I believe is right out of the bo uh, bottle. 
this uh, sky gray. There's another light gray that's very similar. It's a, I mean, the Vallejo light gray is just a bit darker than this. The other thing about a uh, fast drying <coughs> hobby paint, either acrylic or enamel paint, they change color when they dry. You know, they're much lighter. If I if I put a dab of sky gray on this spot, you'd see the difference. It, it would contrast. It's it's just like wall paint. When you put it on the wall at first, it's much lighter and it changes uh, as it uh, as it cures. And that's just the nature of things that have a, an additive that <coughs> helps them dry quickly. You know. One of the things I've always liked about oil paint is that it's what you see is what you get. You know, it does not change color or value uh, when it when it dries. You know. So what I do is. Um, I underpaint the whole figure with uh, acrylic paint, <coughs> and then I use these as a model, the, these colors as a model for mixing oil paint. And I try and match the warm white or the cool white uh, with oil paint first, and then I darken it with something to make shadow, and I lighten it with something to make shadow, or highlight. Um, and uh, and that's how I do it. So what I can do is we're not too hungry yet, right? Okay. Uh, I brought some oil paint. Also, I brought I made about six copies. If you wanna uh, if you wanna take home one of these to um, uh, uh, because it has the Vallejo colors on here. Okay. I'll just put those there and you can pick up, pick one up. When I did this in Burbank, Marcella took a picture <laughs> with his phone. Uh, there's warm reds and there's cool reds, there's warm yellows, there's cool yellows. Uh, one of the factors with oil paint is that it's not made for us. It's made for people who paint pictures on a big canvas. And, and so you, you can see subtle differences when the color areas of color are bigger. Uh, they also like to sell, uh, like a paint company like uh, Windsor & Newton or something like that, they want to they want to have an inventory of a hundred different colors, and they know that people like to paint things that are very vivid. You know, tropical fish and flower arrangements and abstract art and things like that. So many oil colors uh, tend to be very intense. You know, so I, I always uh, gray them down or brown them down. Not always, but normally. Also, when you add white to a color, it can gray down the color. And this is kind of like a creative uh, choice that you make, you know. Um, uh, but I kind of like that. I think it, it, adds, uh, it adds realism you know, to, your, to your finished, your end result. Uh, you know, having uh, like the, when I do red things, even like a British scarlet, uh, I always take. I'll start with a color like cadmium red, but then I'll put yellow ochre to mix with it, and that that browns it down a little bit, and it takes out some of that intensity. Depending on the proportion of ochre to red, you can um, you can uh, do it. And then, when it's done and it dries, it looks more like a cloth. Uh, if the red is browned down a little bit, it really looks a lot more like cloth. Something else, like a uh, 
Now, do you because you're adding yellow ochre to the to your red base? Yeah. Do you do you further add that element into your um, into your highlights and yeah. your shadows? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What I always do with all painting is I start with uh, I make a base color first that looks something like this. You know, I'll do the same thing with my blue and my red and, and uh, stuff like that. Um, and then um, and with oil paint, that's another factor that's different from hobby paint or fast drying paint. It, it's just gonna sit there all day long, and I can play with it. I can. So I can make it lighter, I can make it warmer, I can make it cooler, I can make it darker, and it's just going to be there. And some people have written about, uh, well, what do you, how do you remember the next day when you come back and you have to recreate that color? What I do is I just use a paper palette, and uh, if I've done something complicated, like maybe sometimes you'll have to use four five maybe different colors to make one base color with oil paint. Um, I just save it, you know, uh, I'll tear it off, I'll save the palette so I can remember what the colors were that I started with. And I organize my palette a little bit, I always have the center up here, and, <laughs> and uh, I put the paint from the tubes up here, and so then I, so I can recognize uh, cadmium red deep or cadmium red light or medium or something and uh, that's about all there is to it. Some people, I've read uh, articles, some guy said, uh, well I take my uh, palette and I stick it in the freezer and then the next day I take it out and I can paint some more, you know, I don't have to mix it again. The danger with that is that oil paint actually does dry. Yeah. And what I don't want to do is I don't want flakes of color uh, coming onto my my brush or my a dry color. So I, I always I just make enough color for one day, and then if I need to remember it, I just save that piece of palette paper and start over again the next day. It's very simple. You don't write down like. Three cadmium reds, one yellow, or anything like that. You can you write see? it down if you want to. If you want to. I mean, uh, once you do the colors, you can um, remember? Like that? Yeah, I mean, maybe that just comes over time right. with experience. But, but yeah, you certainly, you could always just write okay. it down. Do you keep a library of those palettes, or are you just no. talking about keeping the palette no, until you finish the figure? Yeah. Because. <coughs> yeah. Um, Because it kind of goes back to the, what you learn is how to, uh, is the color theory part. You know, you, you learn that and you learn how to do things that way. 